Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the webinar dedicated to the topic of uh, gender equality in the use of ICT in education. It's nice to see you all joining and uh, hopefully there will be more participants later. <clears throat> While we're waiting, um, I will briefly introduce myself and uh, explain why we are here and why this uh, meeting is actually happening. Um, so my name is Tatiana Shutova, and um, I am program specialist with the UNESCO Institute for Information Technologies in Education, a uh, unit of teacher professional development and networking. And I hope this is what we're gonna be doing now, uh, professionally developing and also networking. Um, from what I could see uh, among the um, people who registered for the webinar were teachers, university teachers, school teachers, as well as some policymakers. So hopefully this will be an um, exciting place to exchange ideas. Um, speaking about the background of this meeting we are having today, um, UNESCO IITE is uh, together with a Chinese company, NetDragon, is having a joint project entitled Teacher Capacity Building with AI and Digital, Digital Technologies, e-library for teachers. And uh, perhaps if you're here, you are uh, aware of this great resource. Um, I will share my screen now and show to you what this site looks like just in case. And here are various courses that you can um, study there for free. You only have to sign in, enroll, and start learning. Um, so part of the project is uh, developing yet another course. Uh, it is entitled um, Gender Equality in the Use of ICTs in Education. And we are happy and proud that in the Indian Institute of Information Technologies um, have agreed to be the ones developing it. And today here, um, the developers of the course, um, all of them are here. <laughs> uh, we'll be speaking about the first findings that they have uh, discovered uh, prior to the course. And later on, um, in, in the very uh, near future, we will announce the launch of the course. And of course, everybody is well, welcome to join, uh, to sign up and to join. Um, we will circulate, circulate the information about it later. And I suppose with this, I am now giving the word to Professor Ganeshan Kanabiran, and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Tatiana, uh, for the introduction. I also join uh, welcoming all the participants of this webinar. And along with me, uh, Dr. Lata Diaram from IIT Madras and Dr. Kripa Shah from NIT Puducherry are uh, there as part of the team to make the presentation. Uh, uh, Dr. Kripa, can you just show up the presentation? All right, thank you. So uh, I think uh, Ms. Tatiana has already told about this project and uh, we are almost in about 60-70% uh, we have progressed. And uh, this is part of the assignment that we need to do a webinar to the potential teachers. Therefore, uh, we thought we will, uh, in this particular webinar, we shall uh, present uh, our findings, early findings, and uh, share with the participants and take their feedback. And also look at other inputs from the participants and proceed with the completing this uh, module. Uh, once again, thank you for joining. And um, moving on uh, to the agenda. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> Rupa, next slide, please. able to... Uh operate the controls once again. Once again, they done already. You just uh, press on the presentation and then it will work, yes. 
Yeah, yeah. So this is the agenda today. Uh, the first part is already over. Uh, we will make a presentation for about 20 minutes, uh, you know, then we will have uh, enough time for discussion. Next slide. Um, I think somebody else is uh, kind of, okay, one second. Okay. All right. Uh, at a higher level, uh, I thought it's better to uh, uh, give you a perspective on uh, what exactly we are trying to do. Uh, so we are uh, seeing a lot of changes in the second year in higher education uh, throughout the world. And that is impacting um, or it has got impact on two aspects on how um, you know, the teaching learning uh, processes, uh, systems, and other aspects are getting changed because of this. And there's a whole lot of ICT uh, tools which are coming in, um, which are also impacting uh, the teaching learning process. In this context, we are trying to look at, are there any challenges uh, for ensuring gender equality? Next slide, please. <laughs> If you look at a secondary and higher education environment around the globe, around the world, we are seeing certain trends. The first one is uh, the education or the uh, programs that we are offering is moving from national to global. Today, you take uh, any country, uh, including India for that matter, we are having students going abroad to study and equal number of students coming uh, to India now through various schemes. And the degrees that our students earn are applicable not only to India because they are becoming global part of the global workforce. Therefore, the new education initiatives uh, in many developing countries are focusing on providing uh, uh, education and training which will be useful to global um, you know, industries and societies. The second is, uh, slowly we are moving from knowledge to skill development. It's not that we are undermining the benefit of having acquiring knowledge, but the ability to perform is becoming a trend today in today's context. Another major change uh, that's happening is uh, the so-called lifelong learning uh, is slowly uh, sort of taking back, back seat and uh, learning on the fly uh, is uh, happening, <clears throat> which means that Today, uh, you don't acquire uh, uh, education for your lifetime. You just uh, pick up something at the beginning and then start uh, working or doing uh, certain other things Then you uh, pick up additional uh, learning. And um, we, every country is looking at what we call as class enrollment ratio, which is nothing but the number of students who are uh, for passing out of schools or getting into college education. A number of students who are getting into college education is actually complete. Now, this is today at the uh, uh, in first stage school to uh, primary school to secondary school and secondary school to college. This ratio is being uh, throughout the world is being uh, computed, and every country, including the developing developed countries, are looking at how to increase the class enrollment ratio. And uh, today, um, what we are uh, seeing is a uh, Gen Z. Uh, uh, you know, youth, uh, and which is now sort of fading away again. And we are going to have a new generation of um, uh, students, particularly, who will not be Gen Z because, anyway, Z is the last uh, alphabet. So you need to really coin um, a new word to the next generation. But that the next generation is, in terms of the way that they are, uh, you know, getting groomed and developed, is going to be an unlimited. Uh, opportunities. According to many uh, studies, I'm just quoting here the World Youth Report of UNESCO, which is talking about increasing uh, focus on girls' education. Next slide, please. <clears throat> if you look at uh, teaching learning trends today, and uh, increasingly the teacher-centric to um, a system of um, teaching is moving away to learner-centric. So what we call it learner-centeredness. And there are a lot of uh, things being talked in the context of collaborative learning. And of course, technologies enable this collaborative learning. And the renewed focus on social and life skills. 
and ubiquitous learning uh, wherever you are whatever time you are in and you should be able to learn so today's uh, expectation from the learner is um, opportunity to anywhere anytime learning and as much as we talk about collaborative learning as a feature the personalized learning also becomes important and each student each learner is uh, is identified as an individual with certain abilities certain uh, challenges and uh, the uh, the learning opportunities that we provide to those students should be uh, personalized and all the this is also uh, leading to change in uh, role of teachers be it uh, uh, secondary education or um, higher education and there are other uh, things that we have never thought about uh, is automated assessment for example is happening and the final one is the ability to mix the stem with the you know other fields uh, you know arts and other fields is uh, becoming a part of our higher education system and the teaching learning so normally we look at uh, student a bunch of students learning science maths and those and a bunch of students learning arts and related some social science subjects now this is getting uh, linked today in, uh, in the teaching learning context we move on to ict in education uh, present and future on the left side i have put some of those trends in the in today's context we talk about today flipped classrooms augmented or virtual reality online blended learning platforms web 2.0 which is, which uh, which allows uh, co-creation of contents like look at our whatsapp to uh, linkedin to facebook and those uh, which are obviously in in, in uh, you know in a big use today and these also uh, sort of coupled with the cost effective devices uh, e content uh, cloud computing opportunities 4g communication and with this today um, ict the the icts that i have listed here are making have made bigger impact but in the time to come you have ai as a broad term which includes your machine learning and other aspects and big data blockchain gamification mobile learning we look at web 3.0 and metaverse there are wearable devices specialized wearable devices that are coming up and on top of it today we talk about chat gpt and auto gpt which is likely to impact the uh, every field it is impacting and it particularly going to impact the uh, education field in very specifically in the teaching learning processes and it also coupled with interoperable mobile devices cost effective uh, processing and memory technologies 5g communication and others so if you look at overall we are talking about changes in the higher education system changes in the teaching learning process and there are plenty of opportunities being created through ict in this context we don't want the girls and women uh, you know left behind in, the, in exploiting leveraging these opportunities and we want to really find out what are those challenges that women and girls today face in uh, leveraging ict tools in the education context and how can we help them in in local situations in, in at a country level national level at the regional level at the global level that is what we are focusing next slide so in this uh, uh, engagement with uh, the unesco uh, institute of uh, ict for education we are developing a self learning module for teacher training this module if someone goes through and uh, he or she will be able to relate to the situation that they face the gender equality issue or the challenges that they face they should be able to relate and to manage better those situations in the process we are identifying the challenges and barriers and propose a set of interventions um, that can uh, really uh, address the challenges and the uh, barriers and we also talk about if you are looking at a new intervention how do you really um, you know measure and improve the effectiveness of such interventions at the teacher level at the institute level at the national level and the other um, you know ultimate um, uh, objective is to create a community of teachers uh, and academic administrators for best practices sharing collaborate in other areas of mutual interest and provide inputs for policy making 
As part of this, we have collected a uh, lot of inputs um, through review of literature, interviews, survey questionnaires, and of course, uh, through online uh, surveys that we have conducted through the UNESCO uh, platforms. Next slide, please. Now I request Dr. Kripa uh, to present on those um, challenges and barriers that we have identified through our um, uh, I, I explained the process that I uh, just now. <laughs> Kripa, over to you. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, so as already been uh, described, uh, this project which we are undertaking right now is uh, for developing a module, uh, you know, uh, for teachers to become more aware of uh, the issues which are faced around gender equality in ICT use. Uh, now, connecting gender equality to ICT itself, um, it's what we have also found is that often there are gender advocates who talk about uh, gender inequality in various uh, spheres of life, such as society or the workplace, or even the domain of formal education. But uh, there isn't a sufficient amount of discussion which links those uh, discussions to the access of technology or gender parity uh, in the use of ICT. So often a cross-sectional study is essential uh, you know, for a project like this, especially if both domains have to be effective uh, for their causes. So in this section of the presentation, I will be talking about the specific challenges that women face uh, you know, and which need to be considered in evolving ICT policies in order to bridge the digital divide. So we have identified a set of um, challenges. The first of which is, um, the lack of infrastructure. Uh, now this can seem like a fairly obvious sort of a barrier because it affects uh, you know, all societies in developing countries, but it has a, a kind of particularly acute effect on women and girls, especially when it comes to accessing ICT for uh, education. Now this lack of infrastructure can be understood in two ways. Uh, we have identified it in terms of the physical and the lack of access. The physical where uh, you know the girls would be required to physically travel to the center or the institution in order to use existing facilities. And the second one where they would actually have smartphone devices or affordable data packs or even a sustainable or consistent uh, network connectivity in order to be able to access some of these facilities. Um, now, even in terms of accessing uh, digital platforms or public facilities, we have also found other uh, uh, you know, issues such as the lack of smartphones, laptops, broadband connection, Wi-Fi access, and so on, even in education institutions, which may not be equipped uh, for some of these uh, facilities. And uh, when it comes to um, the infrastructure, often there is a bias where we have most facilities concentrated in urban areas. Uh, and they are also, the pricing policies which are evolved are not always keeping in mind what may be friendly for, uh, what may be women friendly in terms of being able to afford it. So these are some of the primary things which we have uh, in terms of the lack of infrastructure. Now, adding on to that, there's a very uh, prevalent sort of barrier, which is the social and cultural issues that uh, women and girls face when it comes to the use of ICT. Now, gender inequality has been there for a long time. It's not a thing, but uh, some of the factors that sustain this inequality also persist with ICT developments and policy. So these norms remain some of the most largely ignored uh, you know, reasons preventing women and girls uh, from accessing mobile phones and the internet. We have various examples in this context where, uh, you know, in many developing countries, uh, there are families that fear giving technological access to women because it is seen as a threat, uh, where it can expose uh, them to different ways of uh, living and being and which could disrupt the existing traditional norms. Uh, in addition to that, we've also noticed gender stereotypes, uh, you know, and this is fairly common uh, in many countries where technology is seen as a male domain uh, and it is seen as uh, a sort of a domain which is even training is related mainly to 
women and this is also affected uh, choices such as investment and uh, spending where parents are reluctant to actually buy equipment for girls but uh, it is easier for them to uh, invest in them when it comes to uh, boys now um, we also have various examples but due to lack of time uh, maybe we can touch upon them in the discussion that we will be after this but just to touch upon a, a global figure here women are 25% less likely to be online than men and this increases to 43% in sub saharan africa so women lag behind by about 14% in phone ownership globally this is not only at the level of local or national issues but also globally we see that there is a very wide sort of a gap when it comes to uh, women's access of ict use Uh, because of social and cultural issues and now the third barrier which we have found is a lack of education digital literacy and skills now this is already an existing condition in many developing countries but it sort of exacerbates uh, the the, uh, the condition of women and girls because digital literacy requires basic competence in using a computer a laptop tablet and so on which is often not the case uh, in many countries now in addition to the lack of uh, education we also have a language barrier where most of the access and training is highly skewed towards english speaking uh, masses and often that is not uh, you know very conducive for uh, women to access the material at least we have currently initiatives such as facebook's we think digital program across india which tries to address this gap uh, and it also tries to look into the reasons why this literacy is at in this uh, kind of state and some of the reasons which we have seen are uh, incompetence poor training poverty and also a kind of mindset uh, you know resistance from the women themselves who are not very keen on learning or skilling themselves uh, when it comes to ict often because of priority uh, when they have domestic duties and other caregiving responsibilities these kind of skills are not seen as a priority in addition to the social cultural barriers which they already face so um, we have also identified uh, or we have also tried to think about this in terms of multilingual portals which could be accessible for non english learners uh, and we can discuss more on the in the uh, discussion session uh, the, the the fourth barrier which we have seen is a lack of adequate teaching learning resources so from infrastructure and social cultural issues we have also looked at the educational scenario itself where there is a need for better teacher training and gender sensitive pedagogy and curricula which can be applicable across flexible learning environments uh, often being mindful of the experience that women have the kind of learning styles cognitive learning styles which they have which can be included in policy around education so we have looked at this model the margolis and fisher model of ict enabled education in the us uh, which modified uh, you know admission policies to give less weight to experience and enabled women to join at various levels of professional life to be able to include them or have a more inclusive policy so this kind of uh, a lack of access to uh, training and learning resources can also be uh, you know address through revamping of curricula and uh, addressing a lack of representation of women often in these learning contexts now one of the most obvious barriers is of course the lack of financial uh, resources uh, where we have poverty and also the lack of financial agency in the household so there are many families where women do not get to have a say in the way that finances are allocated or invested and sometimes this can affect their education and this can affect also their access to opportunities uh, in certain low income households this is a study by nancy hafkin uh, which tells us that um, in many low income households accessing the internet uh, requires people to sacrifice key household purchases such as food health uh, in order to be able to access basic internet services so in these situations uh, high internet prices can discriminate disproportionately against women because ict would remain a low priority and also because uh, mobile phones uh, you know may not be that accessible so in addition to that we could also have issues like lack of documentation 
access to information or network and this could require uh, a more inclusive mobile plan uh, you know policy and uh, awareness around digital finance services as well um the next barrier which we have encountered is the lack of online safety and cyber security so often even when women do have access to digital resources uh, they are not necessarily safe digital environments there are often cases of uh, online harassment cyber bullying other forms of gender based violence which prevent uh, women from accessing ict in education um often this kind of uh, an issue also happens because there's a lack of trust in the service mediators or the infrastructure personnel who are delivering that service uh, and there's a fear of harassment through unsolicited calls and uh, you know a, a lack of data security and so on so this is still a very big deterrent when it comes to using um, ICT um the, the 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 biggest challenge for us when it comes to this project is of course a lack of data uh when it uh, you know for for a subject like this which is gender in ict the lack of statistics and data because it's still a very current sort of domain uh and this is deeply hampered uh you know our own uh, kind of study where we don't have reliable statistics or data even some of the most well known organizations which have done a little bit of uh, research on this are nevertheless not really focused on gender uh, they are focusing on you know other parameters so this uh, remains a big lacuna in in this uh, particular project um, that we have we are doing currently um the last point uh, which we have talked about even earlier a little bit is that there's a lack of dialogue between the ICT policy makers the technology uh, you know experts and the gender advocates who are already aware and have a sophisticated understanding of women's experiences in society but that's not brought into the domain of ICT policy so there is a lack of intersectional approaches when it comes to ICT policy and gender issues and is also the need to sensitive sensitive policy makers on gender issues and to bring gender advocates into the domain of information technology because such a domain a such a dialogue would mean that icd policy will be more comprehensive and also more inclusive that is the uh, point which we have here uh, but in addition to that it, it's we have to also acknowledge that it's very difficult to study intersectional barriers because it is expensive and also because there is a significant variety uh, over social cultural conditions across different countries and uh, to undertake a study like that would require a lot of resources and uh, collaboration um so there's a, the need for interdisciplinary collaboration in order to have best prax practices examined so this is a sort of summary of what i've discussed in terms of the challenges which we have identified when it comes to gender use in uh, gender equality in ict and uh, we have several examples which we can discuss in the next uh, segment of the presentation and uh, i now request uh, dr lata to uh, take it over from here fantastic krupa thank you so much uh, for the wonderful summary of the challenges of gender equality in ict uh, now we are uh, open to discussion and uh, soliciting your uh, views on some of the challenges and barriers uh, which your geography faces uh, in terms of inclusion of women or gender sensitive issues when it comes to ict in education and when we say ict in education it's uh, primarily we are talking about digital literacy and how that impacts students learning so it's important that we look at uh, teachers uh, digital literacy in terms of creating communicating designing evaluating disseminating it impacts several of the student learnings in all these zones so we would like to uh, know and uh, take your Uh, viewpoint your inputs and uh, some of this uh, summary, uh, summary of the challenges which you are seeing on the screen is uh, something which is also uh, intuitive mm, while well, uh, krupa said uh, uh, data is uh, the exact exactness or accuracy of the data could always be questioned stats can always be questioned but intuitively we know and we share uh, across the, uh, the globe what are 
what could be some of the gender sensitive issues. And some of it is what Krupa has captured beautifully. So uh, our primary aim uh, to lead this discussion is, uh, are there any uh, challenges or issues which you think are not getting represented, but they are profound in some geographies, which is not listed here, uh, while we are still developing and uh, uh, creating this project into a much more comprehensive and much more inclusive uh, module. Uh, what do you think would be uh, some of the barriers or challenges uh, which are, you know, glaringly missing from here? Is there anything uh, which you would like to contribute? And then I will take on the discussion uh, on very, very, very fundamental things like equality, equity, and gender. Okay, uh, the, I mean, you double click each of these uh, concepts there is so much literature and so many uh, constructive or intellectually stimulating discussion we can have. But we'll keep the scope to gender equality in ICT. And uh, let's hear from you on what could be some of the barriers and challenges when it comes to gender equality in ICT in your geography. Go ahead. You can just raise your hand uh, and speak. Also, to add to what uh, Dr. Lata has said, uh, in education, we can also discuss interventions. Uh, you know, if your uh, educational institute or if you're in your society, you're familiar with ways in which some of these issues have been addressed, you can, you know, feel free to even share interventions and uh, you know, your own uh, suggestions. Maybe um, first part of the discussion, you can share, uh, you can talk about challenges or uh, issues. And then you can probably, if if largely these are the ones which you're also converging on, you can then move to how do we intervene? Okay, and some of it, uh, what Krupa has already said, are there any gender responsive models in terms of which are getting con, you know, translated into a policy or a best practice in your geography? That would also be good. But let's begin with uh, whatever comes to your mind uh, or is on top of your mind to share. Um, there seems to be a question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesse? Yeah. Dr. Jesse, please go on. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, is it audible what I'm talking? Yes. Can you hear my voice? All right. Thank you. Uh, it's just 11 o'clock here. I'm um, at the University of Swaziland which is now currently called um, University of Eswatini. I'm an educator from the Department of African Languages and Literature. Um, I'm from the Faculty of Humanities and uh, just wanted to, I was just following uh, the presentation and uh, I thought like most of the points that were discussed here um, were quite relevant to us as well. And um, well, um, when I just wanted to talk about the connection to technology, um, it all started with our online learning platform. We, um, it was just in place, but then we had this full-fledged kind of, um, you know, interaction only after COVID. And what happens is like, we have two kinds of streams of students, that is ID students, Institute of Distance Education students, and um, full-time students. So what happens in here is um, the university provides us with all kinds of facilities. Like, uh, for example, we have institutional support because we have the, um, you know, the internet, university-wide internet connection. We have Wi-Fi um, connections in uh, specific stations, and we have Apple Labs and all those things. So in terms of facilities, uh, we are fine. Like it's just provided by the institution, the support is there. Now coming back to um, the gender equality. First thing I wanted to say is like, there are two kinds. First, I wanted to talk about our female students, the Swazi students. Um, basically, um, we need to talk about, or rather we need to understand the, the cultural context in which they come from. Um, 
you know, women or girls are considered as secondary citizens according to Swazi culture. They are in fact not even considered as adults. They are considered as children. So if a, a Swazi man comes to a Swazi household and says, how are you and how are your children? He's literally including the wife as well there or the women folks in the household. So that is the kind of society that, um, you know, that we live in where women are considered as secondary citizens. And we have two kinds of structures at play. That is the traditional structure and then the modern structure. So when we talk about traditional structure, we have students coming from different socioeconomic background. And of course, this tradition is like very strong in play. And uh, when you look at our students, they don't like, they don't have that um, ability to talk against the tradition. They won't even voice out like whatever, like problems, um, submissiveness or oppressiveness that they face, they don't even talk about it because they are petrified. They are literally terrified of talking because this gender-based violence is very rampant here. Uh, we have something called as a, SODB, which is the Sexual Offenses and Domestic Violence Act that was passed only in 2018 after, you know, so many um, years of advocacy. So you could see like what is what we are just going through here. So that is why people are so petrified. Now, coming back to this um, use of technology. Um, well, women have inadequate access to education because like in is what in your course. But one thing I wanted to say is, if you look at a classroom situation, the number of girls is more compared to the number of boys. The reason is girls think that education is a way to, um, or a pathway that takes them to freedom, freedom from these shackles from patriarchy. So that is why we always seen them. It is like they wanted to move away from the traditional structures and they just wanted to come uh, get some kind of education so that they can just move on. It is not to voice, well, some of them just say, but then again, as I say, it is not really to voice out for their own um, lot or their own gender, because as I said, the fear is always there. And another thing is to, they have that, um, you know, even if they just are in um, decision-making uh, organizations or in positions, they are kind of scared mainly because of the fact that if they just voice out something, Maybe it would be taken as um, against those um, people in power, which are mostly males, and they don't want to lose their position there within that power circle. So that is why uh, they don't even talk about it. Now, um, so what happens is like if our students, like for instance, we started teaching our students um, through our Moodle online platform, and then um, you feel that students, our girl students, when they go home, this was during COVID, and when they go home, they were never like the parents or their guardians, they never really give them the ability or the time to just go and spend time participating in the online learning. Because for them, they have the cooking, they need to do the cleaning. So these students, what they do is they won't go home when there is this learning um, you know, process going on. They would rather stay with their friends circle um along with the friends you know in a room where they just have rented a room something like that so that is what happens and they just tell us no i don't want to go home because of abc sorry to interject jesse um uh, uh, are you indicating that uh, these are converging on more of the social and cultural uh, constraints uh, which are more than the actual uh, issue at hand which is digital literacy is that what you're indicating Oh, yes, because um, even if, um, well, I'm just coming to it. I thought like I should just uh, touch upon the social cultural Correct. aspect, the background. Correct. All right. Um, so that is how it is done. And then when you come to us, like the, the teachers per se, what I feel is, yes, um, we were just given some kind of like training, not that everyone knows how to just uh, use this, especially like we come from humanities and we were just learning some of these stuff there. But what happens here is um, uh, the major thing is, uh, well, I would say, even if you know much, you feel that um, you don't want to really like come forward to just like uh, teach the others, like your own students or your own colleagues for that matter. Because the reason is uh, sometimes 
as a woman, you feel that you're not really good enough or you're not good compared to, um, you know, the, the male colleagues. So that is uh, one thing that I would like to say. And another thing is um, women's negative self-image. Women are really shackled by their own um, negative self-image because um, these ideas are internalized by centuries of patriarchal ideologies and gender hierarchy. So that is one thing. Um, every time women try to come up, even those um, of us who know a little bit of like technology and we wanted to like pull everyone onto the platform like um, with us, like, but then we, we feel it is that negative self-image that is always you know, crippling and it's just self-defeating. So that is um, one thing that I would like to yeah. I think, thank you, Jesse. I think uh, the last point right. is something which is very, very unique, uh, not just social and cultural, but you have also mentioned something which is a uh, uh, psychological factors like self perceptions, self, you know, the, the confidence or the concept of self, which is vested with the individual and how it takes shape for women. I think you pointed out that. So it's important that we take a note of psychosocial and cultural factors than just clubbing it under social cultural. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, we have uh, another uh, participant, uh, uh, Yesri Nanko. Yeah, please go ahead. All right, thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. I'm participating from Botswana and the Southern African region, just like the previous. Uh, commentator or yes, participant from Esotini. Thank you so much for this very important uh, discussion and topic. I must say that um, ICT is a very significant game changer or influencer in today's education, which cannot be ignored. The impact of ICT is quite huge, such that women and girls cannot be left behind. But I think maybe we probably need to pay more attention to how the developed nations manage to get their girls and women empowered around ICT. So I think we need to deliberately try and learn from those who have successfully made it. Yes, I appreciate that you made use of the, the Fisher's model of ICT in education in the context of, uh, was it the US or something? And also the other point that I want to raise that I think I like is the lack of data or statistics in on gender and ICT. I think that's a very true point also for our context here. I work uh, in a government institute of health sciences in Botswana. We mainly train your nurses and other allied health professionals. So in our country, the government has made it such that at higher education level, there is every, every student or every learner is expected to undertake a basic ICT module. So this module is called for everyone. I think this is important for closing the gaps. But there's a problem uh, at secondary education level where the ICT course is optional. And I think maybe like when talking of data and the need for more data, we probably need to go back in our context at that level of secondary education and check probably who has more interest in the computer studies course since it's optional. And I would assume that probably boys, because of the cultural stereotypes, would tend to be the ones who tend to pick the computer studies course at secondary level, such that when these learners come to higher education context, you'll find that maybe the boys are the ones who tend to show uh, more of the skills and the interest and the passion for, for ICT. So, so and otherwise, but I, otherwise I, I feel that there's also need for more, more radical 
policies on ICT in order to really make a positive impact around girls and them acquiring vision and, and life. So I think the policies need to be more stronger so that they can make it mandatory for everyone to acquire the basic ICT skills as early as they can and also emphasize the importance of applying ICT skills for developing their lives or the gadgets and the internet to mainly to lean more towards social media, but to try and use ICT for personal and self-development. I think such an emphasis also needs to be uh, paid attention to. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, uh, I, I, are, you uh, are you indicating, uh, NACO, oh, that the stereotypes is not much to do with the women here, but more to do with the ICT itself, where ICT needs to be utilized and what will be the ICT education good for uh, and who it should be directed to. The, the kind of stereotype is about ICT itself, the necessity of the ICT itself than just gender stereotype. Is that right? Or is, is there something which I'm missing here? Yes, I think you you are right. You had you had me well. We we need, we probably need to also make a shift towards uh, emphasizing the importance of ICT towards uh, one's development, all right? Okay. So that this is appreciated by everyone. Everybody. But my, okay. yes, my my emphasis is also more on that the the the, the policies, educational policies need to also place ICT properly such that all the gaps will be closed. Fantastic. All right. Great. Thank you, Nako. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Can we uh, go back to Jesse and uh, uh, take her views on uh, how do you think uh, oh, these oh, issues. Is, excuse me, there is a hand from Lena. Yes, oh, okay. thank you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Lena. No problem. I, I didn't raise, like, I took some time to raise my hand. I'm oh, sorry. Pardon, pardon. <laughs> um, yes, what I thought was maybe missing from the, the issues, um, or from the, yeah, from the issues was that um, technology itself especially artificial intelligence can have a gender bias. So mm -hmm. um, if artificial intelligence is trained with biased historical data, then it can be reprodu reproduced um, in the output of the artificial intelligence, right? And if that um, is then oh. used, for example, to decide who gets access to certain education, or if that um, is used to produce education material, um, it can then be like inside the material or inside the, the uh, yes, people who, who get actually access. Um, so it I does. think that's, that's also maybe an issue that could be added to to the ones that that you mentioned on the slides i think uh, it's a it's a wonderful insight lena uh, i just want to uh, ask you further on this uh, when you were thinking of ai uh, you know uh, when we are relying on ai and uh, you know artificial intelligence driven decision making or predictive tools uh, can ai be biased can ai stereotype people people stereotype people anyway can ai also join this and uh, uh, you know stereotype so does this uh, question us um, on who are the creators of or who are the owners or who are the default owners of the technology um yes i think ai can be biased if it's trained with biased data if if you feed it historical data that has a gender bias then of course it's reproduced in the results so yes i think it can be biased Fantastic. Of course, it's so, the it's the people who who choose mm -hmm. the data or or who who create the AI with that data, but but still, it's reproduced in the results. So, in a way, it can be biased, in my opinion. Absolutely, absolutely. You have raised a very pertinent one because the foundation of AI is also something which is people, 
and uh, which people have lost control on uh, curbing the impact of AI now. Huh. Uh, so it's a large big data to be managed and people have uh, trusted AI. I think fantastic point. Uh, I think uh, we have noted to, uh, that. Yes, Krupa. Yeah, just to add to that, uh, thank you, Lena, for that point. Um, uh, not just for AI, but also when it comes to digital materials, I think you mentioned that uh, the education material itself could have a gender bias and therefore propagate that in training itself, which is uh, which is quite a valid point. Um, so we mentioned a, little, a point uh, relating to the representation of women when it comes to education material, not just in the levels of management or in policy making, but also in the material itself, there's a sort of lack of representation uh, you know, on women. So that point that you're saying uh, you know, is definitely well uh, well taken and uh, we will definitely uh, you know, talk more on that. Yeah. Thank you. Any other uh, challenges or barriers in the respective geographies, which is clearly missing from here on what we discussed. Yes, though my hand is not raised. I think I like the, the issue of AI. It's, mm -hmm. it's also a problem because uh, ICT changes and moves at a very rapid pace, such that someone who has passion for ICT needs mm -hmm. to keep up. So if you don't have passion for ICT, you may just be left behind. You see, right now we are talking your AIs and many other new emerging technologies. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the pace at which IT is evolving and you know moving is also a challenge by, on, its, on its own. Absolutely. Okay. Are there any other uh, comments or feedback from the participants? Uh, uh, Lata, you wanted to go back to Jesse. Uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to have at least uh, one round of uh, any uh, any insights or any best practices which you guys are already doing it, and uh, we don't have to reinvent the wheel again. Uh, if you can share that. Uh, you know, while we are documenting some of the uh, best practices and uh, it has the policy implications while we are documenting that, it would be nice if you, uh, you know, could share some of the best practices for the challenges which you have mentioned. Yeah, there is uh, a person, Jasper. Mm -hmm. Jasper, please go ahead. Please unmute your mic and speak. Yeah. I want to talk about the challenge of resources. Yes, Jasper. So it's needed to and so yeah, in, in Ghana, especially in my school, we teach ICT as four subjects, but there is, there is no much resources in the school. Uh, we are not able to hear you properly. Um, can you just close your video and use only the audio? Okay. Yeah, now probably try, you will be able to listen to you. Yes, so as I said earlier on, I was talking about the resources which are available in our schools. In my school, at Kama Senior High, we only teach the theory aspect. And the practical aspect is very difficult to engage in because the resources there are not enough. We have about 70 students in a class, and maybe the computer there might be five, only five. How can you engage effectively with the children to 
go through the practical aspect. So it's very difficult. And then also, we have to also depend on the interests of the children. If the interest is not there, you might teach and teach and teach. It will not go anywhere. For an example is a student opted to do EMATS and he or she was asked to do elective ICT. Meanwhile, his interest wasn't there, but he has been forced to engage in ICT. So with this, with this challenge, though we are championing ICT, let's concentrate on the interest of the child. If the interest is not there, you might engage, engage in, it will not be effective. And also, my uh, opinion on gender issue. When, we, when the issue of gender comes in, the woman or the girl child comes into play much more than the male. I think it should be open. It should be open enough for everybody instead of concentrating only on the girl child. But the, uh, the girl is, is, is already true that educating a child is educating the whole nation. But the, the girl child is not interested. How can the whole nation be educated? So it should be open now for everybody to engage in ICD rather than concentrating only or much more on the girl child. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jasper. I think you emphasize the individual factors uh, more, and that's something which is very, very crucial. Individuals' interest, sure. individuals' yeah. willingness. We have taken a note of that. Thank you so much. Uh, anyone uh, would like to go back and see, uh, are we looking at gender responsive models? If yes, uh, what are some of the best ones in your location, in your geography? What are the best gender responsive models you have had uh, when it comes to including um, you know, equality or looking at equality of gender in ICT in education? Or, are you looking at gender agnostic models? So any, any of the best practices, whatever has worked in your location or in your geography, uh, we would be highly grateful if you can emphasize some of the worked ones, practically worked ones uh, in this forum. Because at the end of the day, it's important that whatever works uh, is something which is taken forward than giving it a policy shape. Of course, when uh, you know it, uh, it has a broad basing capacity, automatically it translates to a policy. But not every best practice is translated into a policy. And that's the issue of the governance. That's a separate discussion we can have. But at the ground level, there might be a lot of good things which are happening to tackle these issues. Anybody would like to highlight any of the best practice which is operating or which is working absolutely fine from your end? It looks like that there are no other uh, inputs. Okay. Hi. Yeah, please go ahead. I'm Samuel Okuata. Mm -hmm. I might teach one of the scary schools in Ghana yet. Yeah, and what my school, I mean, the district education have done is that they have this program for the girls. They call it Girls in IT. So it gets to a time that they will organize the girls and they will highlight, they will teach them more about ICT. 
and they will participate and they will call other basic schools. I mean, the basic school, you know, in the high school, but you call some of the basic school girls. So, and you pinpoint them that, oh, we have this woman who is doing, who is an engineer, and we have this woman who is also teaching ICT. And, and that's, I think, it is gradually going to encourage the girls to fully participate in the ICT. That's what my school, I mean, the issue that I, I find myself in, that's what they do. Thank you. So are you are you emphasizing Samuel uh, that uh, it it's uh, teacher driven or individual driven ones which largely work? I, I think it, it, it is a teacher driven one that is gradually working as largely improve girls in ICT because mainly for the girls in my school. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. I think uh, there are no more uh, reports. Okay. Uh, yeah, we can uh, possibly close. Um, okay. I think Nata, you can logically close first, then uh, Tatiana will close the meeting. All right. So thank you so much, uh, all the uh, participants for excuse participating. Excuse me. Thank you. There seems to be a hand, Jasper. Ah, yes, Jasper, yes, yes. Jasper, Jasper? Yes. Uh, in our end year in Ghana, I'm in high school. Once a month, the whole body is added and the presentation is done on how to search information on the net to help the students. Maybe after they have vacated and gone home, how to still because in the school they don't allow them to use phones because of using uh, this phone. They just uh, aspect in the school, so they don't allow them to use uh, phones in the school. So once a while, once a month, they ask them to come together, a presentation is done on how to search information on the net. And when they go home, they replicate it to help them still learn at home. Thank you. Point taken, Jasper. I think, um, you know, some of uh, the nuanced uh, ways of managing uh, you know, locally, indigenously, it's very important. So maybe once in a month, people are given uh, opportunities to interact and get to know and get get more awareness about these things. And uh, some of them, uh, you know, uh, at the home, the environment might be conducive or may not be conducive, but in a common place, uh, probably it becomes a little more uh, available and accessible. So we need to really look at what works uh, for the uh, you know, local context. The context is the hero. So uh, uh, we need to really get more stories like this uh, from all of you. And thank you so much for uh, your time and attention and sharing your perspectives and some of the ways in which you have already tackled these issues uh, in the past and it's working fine for you. Thank you so much. Sorry, I would not request, uh, snack. So just, just one more point that I forgot. As a yeah. best practice from our country. Okay. From, la from last year, the, mm -hmm. the government started uh, issuing laptops to students at secondary school level, okay. especially, sen especially senior secondary school level. I think that's a very important uh, point of consideration that I think this side, something, something good is trying. So, and when everyone is given, it means both girls and boys are, were given laptops to and aid yes. them in their in the education. All secondary schools or, or uh, are selected government aided public schools or? Mo most senior secondary schools. It's a, it's a national project where eventually all school, all secondary schools will be given laptops. Students will be and given yes. laptops. 
Fantastic. That's nice. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as soon as we decided <laughs> that probably mm -hmm. it is time to finish, then uh, there were a couple more comments. Thank you very much uh, you. for the uh, information. Um, so apparently we have to be finishing now. And so if you have any last minute thoughts, it is time to voice them. Um, Uh, so, um, I would like to thank you, um, Dr. Kanabiran, Dr. Krupa, Dr. Lata, for the information that you have shared. And thank you very much to the participants, to everybody who have spoken. And um, perhaps if you have any more ideas, um, I, can I ask uh, Dr. Kanabiran, are, we, are you going to share this um, presentation? So it can be maybe circulated to the participants afterwards. Yes, we can do that. We can consolidate the inputs and uh, anyway, we are going to incorporate it in the material. So the material anyway is available to everyone. They can access. Um, I, I think it could also be a good idea to invite anyone uh, who maybe has some thoughts because you know all the bright ideas uh, visit us <laughs> after the meeting is, is over. Uh, so perhaps if you do have some ideas afterwards, everybody is very much welcome to share the thoughts and uh, I, I hope uh, the organizers will be happy to um, <laughs> to listen uh, and to incorporate the ideas. And um, with this, I suppose we are finishing the recording uh, and uh,